How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Blue Shifting, and welcome back to Ch uh, gosh darn it, how do I say it again? Chusotsu. <laughs> I started slaughtering that. But welcome back to Chusotsu. Uh, it's the interesting game of this dystopian future where we all live under the. I, I I'm gonna say I think it's gonna be the combined lifestyle slash culture of North and South Korea. And I'll get to why in just a second. I wanted to correct one thing real quick. Last time when I went and I saw this handy tools tip over in the right hand corner, it reminded me a lot of Seabed. So I thought it was made by the same people and I kind of mentioned that. However, I got a message later that it was not by the same people. So I looked it up and it's by a studio called Studio Beast. So thank you so much for making this game. I'm really curious to see what it's all about. So far it's off to a good start and the quality level is pretty darn good. So. Uh, I guess we'll continue to jump into it. But anyway, so last time I mentioned, because based on the, the description of the the nation in, gen in, in, in general that's established as world order, um, I noted how the name was very similar to what the North Korean, uh, what North Korea goes by. Uh, and I think that's a big premise for it, besides the description of a, like, northeastern, um, nation that was looked down upon and kind of ridiculed by the world. I mean, that kind of just sounds most like North Korea. So I want to point out it could, have, it could be Japan, however, my opinion is that Japan is fairly well respected. They could be made fun of because there's some odd stuff in Japan, but, like, every country's got a little odd stuff. I mean, the United States has all this, like, hillbilly hicks and all that stuff, you know what I mean? Just because there's stuff that's that's interesting that can kind of get stereotyped, it doesn't mean that that's what most people think of when they think of your country. But North Korea's had it kind of rough, so I imagine that being described as one that was seen with ridicule would match it a lot. And in the society, we see it it, it kind of follows this this idea because in um, from what I know, obviously, I know very little about North Korea. <laughs> they, they do a good job trying to make sure we don't know anything about it. But what, from, from what I understand, I believe they actually do have a, a similar system to this where um, you're kind of told what your job should be. Not so much about, like, pursuing a dream. You can, I mean, you kind of can. But, like, ultimately it's not up to you. It's up to the state to determine what you would do for your life. Um, which is kind of similar to this, but this also, this, this government system seems to be a lot lower key than super strict dictatorship per se, um, which kind of resembles South Korea and Japan in a sense that like, they're very well known for being places where like, you're expected to work, you're expected to work hard, and you're expected to be grateful that you can do it. Like, uh, like was it, I recently read an article that South Korea has like the, the longest, um, the longest work week of a developed nation like where up until like a month ago or something 65 hour work weeks were considered appropriate and not overtime but they've actually scaled it back now to 55 hour work weeks are appropriate and then after that it's overtime which is insane compared to like what we experience which is 40 hour work weeks just being the the, the full full time working so i don't know it could be a lot of things, and we'll, as we get into it, maybe we'll get a few more clues, but regardless, we're jumping into this new culture, and we're going to be following our main girl as she tries to figure out her place in the world, so I think we're going to be seeing her taking the test today, so that'd be interesting. Anyway, let's jump right back into it on Main Street. Oh, no. Are you already lost? All right, you need to get there. Like, this is important. Throwing her brow, she struggled to make sense of the map. Indeed. All right, did, didn't leave her hometown for no reason. Now, this is cool. That actual tip kind of reminds me of Stein's case of the makeup examination. Um. Wait, so where... Oh. Oh, retests. They had to do tests on the people's uh, safety net program, targeting those devoid of an authorized seal. The contents of the tests are identical to those of the regular tests. The difficulty depends on the person's uh, scholastic year when they last took their last test. Successful applicants are allowed to have learning or working opportunities. Okay, so they ultimately it, it's just saying that like just because you have circumstances that prevent you from keeping up with your with your your tests you can continue them later, guaranteeing you a position uh, in society as long as you take your aptitude tests eventually. Yukuyuku, road to the 
Oh, who talks like that? <laughs> She'd go from Chusatsu, a jobless middle school graduate, to a government employee. Oh, good luck, sweetie. The compat compatibility examination system determined your future based on your compatibility rating. Given how the system worked, a Chusatsu hoping to become a government employee was similar to an amateur trying to become an Olympic gold medalist. I mean, it's so possible, but it's going to require a lot of work. However, that alone didn't mean it was impossible feat. Had Adara stayed in her hometown, there would have been no chance of it ever happening, given her circumstances. Still... Uh... Yeah? Special entry into a new style designer... Uh, in, into a new style designer condominium. This property... Oh, there's no tips again. This property was made available with a real estate company, QOLIC. Alright, so QLIC. A newly established custom estate builder built in uh, Saitama, the Japan region. And they use their cutting edge design to appeal to customers. The, public, the public, publicity sought test residents for their whole new property, Tabula Rasa, which, uh, with a new product newly developed by them requiring no rent. The three Chusosu girls have been selected. Okay, so. Interesting. So, like, if you got approved for this, you got free housing. I'm guessing it's designed for people who need to get their authority seals. Alright, go away, tips. The condo already had some residents since last year, so said residents were required to use certain machine located in one of the rooms on a daily basis. Afterwards, they would need to file reports. Oh, okay, so I'm guessing it's going to be like a pseudo, like, uh, fallout vault, where they're going to do, like horrific psychological tests on you because they, they're not charging you rent so they're going to mess with you. It was basically a monitoring program. The monetary, the monetary compensation for the deal was, amount, was an amount normally unheard of. The screening and conditions for entry were also quite severe. Oh dear. But that was not the problem. For Aure, sharing a room with the other participants was about as frightening as having to march off to war. She was enough of an airhead to, uh, to even die in the process. <laughs> Man, as a narrator, I'm being rather harsh. <laughs> Dismissing such concerns, she charged forward with the zeal of a kamikaze pilot. <laughs> oh dear, fully expecting to fail. Aww. Hence her current struggle with the map. Tabula rasa. Oh, I swear I know what that is. Like, I've heard that phrase before for sure. Tabula rasa. It was the name of the condominium she would soon inhabit. A brand new world based on the concepts of self-reformation uh, and graduation. It was Aroe's destination, but... I know, right? I mean, come on! She felt like a foreigner. Uh -oh. She glanced back down at the map. She had already lost sight of her position. I really feel bad. Like, map, map, I, I think, um, I'm really lucky. I had a time in my life where I actually wasn't able to have access to GPSs for a little while. It's complicated, but in fact, a lot of it has to do with, like, lack of funds <laughs> and a crappy phone. But, uh, I actually had to learn to navigate using maps. Like, full on like opening up big maps in the car and like coordinating where I was and how to get there, memorizing or writing down a quick list of like turns you make on certain roads. Uh, and I'm really grateful for that time because it really will help me in the future with deciphering maps if I ever travel somewhere. Good luck for me if I ever travel to somewhere like Japan where I can't read anything. Well, hopefully I can read something, but like I probably won't be able to. So that'll be an adventure, but I think I'll be a little bit better off than poor Adara here. I doubt that's true. The seal doesn't change who you are. The seal just gives you... It, it, it's, it's society's description of your abilities, not your actual abilities. Unfortunately, she is currently unmarked. All the people passing by have seals on their hands. Ooh, that looks interesting. So it literally says what your uh, job is. Interesting. And I wonder, I'm guessing they're like a tattoo. <laughs> Excuse me. The authorized power certificate, also known as the authority seal, had the ability to raise an individual's numerical specs, also known as authorized power. Okay. 
Lazarus power. The ability is owned by uh, the ability is owned by an individual. Also described as status. One's authority power value is the sum of their total powers, and a higher value meant to be more powerful status. The unit status is power. The ones on top of the ra in the top of the ranks are the government employees, and they decide who receives which status. Enabled by enabled by the new type of nano machines developed at the same time as this power system was introduced. The government employees possess superhuman powers, while the unemployed are inferior to infants. Interesting. So is it like literal superhuman powers, or is it simply a metaphor for how much societal power they have? Although one still rank decides their status, their abilities depend on their condition level, a uh, cognition level, societal contribution level, and stability level. Oof, man. Part of me is getting super curious as to where I'd be ranked in the system. <laughs> a public officer, as a reference, possessed an authorized power of a ten of ten point zero zero zero, capable of slaying a cow with their bare hands. Oh wow. There was a case where a bureaucrat with an authorization power of nine hundred and fifty stopped from running. Uh, stopped a running Shin Kaz, uh, Kansen bullet train. Okay, so this is like literal superpowers. Dang. Oh, jeez, and then seals. Oh, wait, wait, no, we've already read the seals, so we're good. In addition to the recipient's clear-cut physical and professional prowess, it also applied his or her intelligence. For example, if you switch jobs to work at a temple, your body's abilities would suddenly change too. Ooh, this is getting really interesting. If you went from warrior to playboy, all your combat prowess would go poof, just like that. And then there was a measure of a seal strength, the authorized power. Authorized power 5, without the words trash here, aww. To make a specific comparison, not even babies had power levels that low. There was no way Otter could read a map, of course. Okay, so maybe she has a point, thinking about that, because dang, that's... That's really crazy. Like, it literally morphs based on like what your job is and your intelligence and your social contribution. Ooh, interesting. That's in oh like because like it's like it's artificial. effectively it's giving people artificial superpowers, but it's dictated by the government. Oh that's there's no way that could possibly go wrong. <laughs> oh. She tripped over nothing. This was a special physical ability of a person without a seal, in other words, an unmarked. It really is like an unmarked. Uh, the alias by which people without authorization seals go, the term is generally used to describe an employed. Unmarked used to be a pejorative uh, per, uh, word with the P3 law and the authorized seal system were first established, but over time has become a slang word that nobody in the present day considers dis uh, discriminatory. The unmarked do not own authorization seals. They do st they but they still have a personal number melded into their bodies of birth, which provides them with human rights. So if you don't even have that, you don't even have human rights? What the fetch? Not owning an authorized zeal means not being able to enjoy its benefits. One of the worst disadvantages is that the unmarked authorized power is fixed at five, which is unfair even to the little children. Oh, come on. We gotta get up. We gotta get you the... You need to get something. Big... Uh... Oh, is this a kid? Big sis. Oh, you are okay? Looking up, she saw a little girl in a smock. Her eyes glimmered with purity. She was probably only four or five. She reached out towards Adara. Adara hesitated whether she should take the girl's hand. Uh, you're going to get bloody. She stretched out her hands to each of Adara's sides. Oh. Oh. Lift. The girl easily pulled and strained Adara up like she was some doll. Wow. Are you hot? And out, uh, and out her, and out came her slang. Yo, just like that. Bye bye. The girl left, waving her tiny hand in a large arc. The nano machines in her hand gave off a faint glow. What is it? Uh, um, Otto flipped through her authorized power guidebook. Okay, so the guidebook will actually like tells you. Interesting. So she's a power twenty. Uh, upgrades physical performance. Upgrades intelligence. Gives the pure attributes. Protection A. <laughs> oh gosh, it's like living in a video game. It is not to touch required. So will never be deprived. Wait. So she automatically will never lose this after two twenty. Even though she's really young. 
So how did Adara lose hers? A seal's ability would rise and fall according to the job's cognition level, society contribution level, and stability level. The harder a job, the more your body and mind would be improved. Thus, government worker was simply a pronoun for the most powerful job. While speaking of someone without a job... Oh. There's a bookstore right nearby. Upon entering it, Adara found a second graduate, a second grade uh, arithmetic drill book. She nervously opened it up. Two digit edition. Slowly closes the book. Can you not do basic edition? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you shouldn't give up and just go to life with a prostitute, yes. She broke down sobbing. <laughs> Strengthening her aura? <laughs> Adria concentrated on the map. She imagined herself concentrating all her intelligence into a single point on her forehead. <laughs> From inside the foggy map, district numbers and store names began to float to the surface. She's even able to identify some buildings to use as landmarks. She could work with this. Now she just had to set a course. Shopping mall. Oh no, don't get distracted. Adara broke her into a beaming smile. There were tons of fun looking places on the map. I got a little note in her mouth. I marked it was. She collapsed. Okay, so she had a seal, so you get one as a kid, but you can lose it. Destination, fun, and exciting things. This too was a defining feature of a Chusatsu. Hmm. Come on, stay focused. We need to get to this freaking apartment building. Rest, 3,800 uh, 3, yen. Stay, 6,800 yen. Feeling like she was on a picnic, Adara ended up stumbling into a lover's hotel district. Oh, yeah, that does sound like... I was trying to think, it was like, what would look like a castle in Japan? I should have realized it was lover hotels. I watched a cool YouTube video that kind of, like, did some tours of them to show, like, what they actually are, and they can be crazy. Um, sure. Well, I guess. <laughs> right in front of Adara, who had since completely forgotten about her original goal. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Who is this? Jolly man. Like I was saying, I just want to listen to what I have to say. There's a little girl being pressed on by a large man. Sounded like super little, but yeah. Oh. I think, wait, wait, wait. Nope. Oh, yeah, that's the like, thing. Yeah, like, I don't know. She doesn't look She, she might look short, but she definitely doesn't look like. Like. Adara looks like Adara looks young. I don't know if she looks as young. With all due respect, I can see you are unemployed. Given the characteristics of the P3 law, I believe you should know the chances of passing through a re-examination are extremely low. Isn't this good? Raising a seal will get a heart. Uh, regaining a seal will get harder and harder. But just for you, we have something great to offer. I might have been generally oblivious, but, but even she could tell what was going on. It was called scouting. Oh, yes. Her folded arms made it a bit difficult to see, but the girl didn't appear to have a seal on either hand. She was on March, just like Adara. Dang, okay, so like, if you got a more questionable job, would you actually get a seal for that? I mean, the government probably regulates everything, including the more unsavory sides. <laughs> 
Either I knew this could be her tomorrow could be her tomorrow. Seals were proof of one's identity in the real world. Proof that you were a pure person with nothing to hide. It was something the unmarked lacked. Which meant that they essentially lived in the shadows. They were outsiders. Weaklings. And weaklings had a plethora of weaknesses. In other words, she was likely a Chusutsu. The pain of living in a world, a society, that would have you declare yourself as a Chusutsu. Adara knew all about it. With every pore of her body, even worse than her worsening physical condition and inferior mental capacity, it was that pitifulness, that shame. Because of that, um, even Adara. Please excuse me. I would like to hear you repl your reply. Mm hmm. The girl just stood there without uttering a single word, maintaining a complete poker face. Not even her eyebrows twitched. Opposing her was a huge man, with his naked torso bare. Oh, jeez, dude, put on a shirt. Needless to say, his bottom half was covered only by a single boomerang-shaped layer of underwear. Oh gosh! Put up pants, too! I, I'm feeling that fear, too! <sighs> Suddenly, the man flushed his muscles. His chest muscles rippled fiercely, making it obvious he was some sort of bodybuilder. It was clear that he tried to intimidate the girl with his d demonstration. The girl, however, simply remained standing. Maybe she couldn't move? Was she frozen with fear? <laughs> Elra turned around and suddenly stopped in her tracks. Uh oh, is it time to be a hero? It kept coming and going. What did? Mr. Oh, oh my gosh, that's what a name. Alright, Mr. Mina Mikoshigara. A manga writer. One that Adara adored. A veritable hero of writing 20 different series at the same time. Ooh, boy. The one who saved Adara's hospital life. No, her entire life. These main characters were all brave. They believed in justice. A far cry from Adara herself. The exact opposite of what she was. Her body wouldn't move. Even as she watched the girl being pushed around by that massive muscle. But that was a given. Hmm. Adara looked at the girl. She had a flowing black hair and wore a souvenir jacket. Her sense of style gave off an aura of stoicism. Her eyes looked sharp. Sharp enough to kill whoever she stared at. The crossbow-like stare was aimed straight at Adara. Um... Okay. <laughs> I like how this whole conversation, like if we were to be like watching it, is all in her head and would just be described by very like exa ex exaggerated facial expressions. And I showed the girl back of her hand, then tapped her empty, unmarked hand. Finally, she half opened her mouth and made the dumbest face she could muster. With this, the girl had to realize that Adara was both powerless and utterly useless. <laughs> hmm. She was staring right at Adara. <laughs> uh huh. It was quite the powerful stare indeed. She must have been known as a. Uh, <laughs> um. What? Must have been known as a gangbanger? I don't think that's the right word. <laughs> Definitely a dead word back home. What? Huh? Huh? The man, large as a rock, turned around. Oh my! Here's another unmarked girl! <laughs> Glory upon God of bodybuilders for granting this wonderful day! <laughs> the man flexed his muscles in a bodybuilding pose. Look at this cut! Oh, I've never. This is. I've never chatted a more un. like. a, a personality so opposed to mine. <laughs> Either I felt her consciousness slipping away. Don't pass out! <laughs> tremble, tremble, tremble. Either I desperately held back the urge to pee. No! Come on! It's not that bad! First, I want you two to hear me out. Okay. Bam. He slammed his hand on the neighboring wall. 
effectively cutting off the only point of escape. Adara felt herself in an utmost state of panic. Felt herself in an utmost state of panic. Uh oh, now you're gonna act? Please calm yourself and listen. I'm trying to offer support for unmarked girls. Witnesses would later recount the events like this. I think it was two flips. You know, one of those perfect judo sweeps. It's not every day a naked man gets grabbed with just one arm and launched like some small rock. Right, it went all it was it went all smoothly. He flipped around twice in midair. <laughs> <laughs> wow, interesting. You're really strong for not having a seal. Before she knew it, the man in front of Adara was downed. The flipping, the flapping sleeves of a souvenir jacket followed closely behind her, as she gradually evened out her breathing and looked down upon the, her defeated opponent. Well, aren't you terrifying? But in a cool way. え、あれ、にげろってあいつだった?いや、それよりも you know, she didn't have a seal, she's probably a master, like, like, they mentioned judo, and, I, and I, that would make sense. Like, judo's all about controlling your opponent's energy rather than using your own. It's a great technique of fighting based on the ability of using your opponent's strength against them. Her voice was quiet and frail, didn't match well within the sharpness of her, well with the sharpness of her eyes. <clears throat> もう動き出した。抑え込むから君は人を呼んでくれるかな。え、あ。いや、who? She looked at the girl's hands again. No matter how many times she looked, they were no they were unmarked, just like Adara's. People without seals were weak enough to be pulled up by a little girl. Go on, wake up. She asked for help. Go. よくわかんないけど、すごい。<laughs> Attack on Tyranny. <laughs> she was a manga character. Fierce, composed, and a woman of few words. Regardless of the actual topic at hand, Adara's thoughts would often drift off to the realm of manga. Her brain was basically made of the stuff. Wow, come on. Alright, alright. You've been talking about yourself as being slow. Maybe you're right. Come on! No sweat, my alma mater wrestler's club didn't call me the jolly man of the great report for nothing. Ha <laughs> ha! This headlock won't hold me. The man excelled deeply and forced his body up in a bridge. Come on, go! The girl held it back with a body control technique. She stayed on top of him, not budging an inch. <laughs> Yahoo! Her voice was laced with a hint of desperation. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Come on! <sighs> the glare from her eyes is overpowering. <laughs> Foom. Adara's anxiety scale gauge skyrocketed out of nowhere. <laughs> Be rising. Ding! Gauge maxed. Woo woo! <laughs> Whenever she got an anxiety attack, Adara's language centers would start bugging out. She blurted out flag raising phrase common phrases common of RPGs of y of your What a mess. What a mess. Oh man. Oh, what? <laughs> eh... Yeah, I know, right? <sighs> so you didn't even get help? You just left her? <sighs> Heaving her shoulders up and down, Adara tried to catch her breath. Being a fairly weak person to begin with, it took several minutes for her just to steady herself. After getting back to the main street, she took a look around. <laughs> Powerless, she plopped down on the ground right there. Oh, 
もう絶対逃げないって決めてたのに。Yeah, I gotta admit, considering that someone was asking you for help, not very cool. Indeed. I, I, I mean, I can't blame her, I suppose. I mean, you don't think clearly when you're feeling like you're under threat, like genuinely under a threat of some kind. But still, I mean, she was only being told to go get help. Why couldn't she just do that? She just kind of stood there, mumbled some questions, and then ran away. Aww. She promised herself she wouldn't run. Whenever Adara got pressured mentally, she ended up running away somewhere. Like, to her fantasies or our rooftop. She did it on countless occasions when she was going to school, even when she lost her seal. She fled from reality, from everything surrounding her. I guess it kind of makes sense. It matches her personality, but that's going to be a pretty freaking big hurdle for her getting her authorization seals. This time, she ran away from the guilt of abandoning the person who saved her. Rather, I imagine the girl being the one getting pinned down instead. What happened afterwards was far too nauseating for another girl like her to even imagine. It was a result of Adara trying to save only herself. She felt guilty. The pain was unbearable. Which is why she fled to the rooftop. She had to look after her heart's maintenance. This was, uh, this was Mare Sugawa, Adara's repair time. She carried out a rewriting of her thoughts. A process far easier than ordering things online. Adara pulled out a sketchbook and fountain pen from her travel bag. She pressed the tip of the pen into white paper. She drew a cross. Adding a bit of perspective. Then she drew a curve. Several more curves were added as Adara continued to draw out the edges. She repeated that process for several minutes. Aw, interesting. The cat eared vampire smiled back at her from the paper. She gave her a speech bubble with some text. Ooh. Mouse juice with pulp is delicious, meow. <laughs> that was a dark joke. To be honest, it was incredibly lame. But that was just fine. Her goal was simply to draw. A blank space began to form in her heart. So, she just drawing. I, I, my equivalent would be writing. Adara knew that she didn't solve anything. For a brief moment, her heart had repaired itself, just a tiny little bit. She now felt enough slack to be able to start chastising herself. God, I feel sorry for the girl. In the end, she kept on running from her feelings of guilt. She knew it would be a terrible habit. She knew all too well, yet every time she fled from something, Aga would think that. She'd reset her life. She'd return everything to begin to the beginning, whiting out all these failures. <laughs> you start though. You got your goals. You gotta start somewhere. <laughs> there she was, homesick for a year after a few hours of leaving home. <laughs> she rummaged through her bag. When Adara left home, her mom gave it to her. She told her to eat it on the train, but being the country bumpkins that they were, neither of them could imagine the reality of a packed rush hour train. Adara unwrapped the cloth around her untouched lunchbox and lifted up the lid. <laughs> White rice and a wiener, nothing else. Aww. <laughs> Sounded exactly like a line spoken by a skit of some poor guy. But to Adara, it was cold, hard reality. Oh, man. Her life is so hard. Dang. The clothes she wore now were given to her as a present just the day before. From the chronically just here, uh, uh, from the chronically <coughs> desertifying Marhi, Mar, gosh darn it. Mari Sugawa, home. Even things like clothes and wieners weren't easy to produce on a whim. Her mother even gave her a smartphone out of worry. Adara felt her chest tighten just thinking about it. Mm. As she reminisced about her past, Adara bit down on her lip, uh, down on her lips. 
<laughs> いただきます After joining her hands together, she gobbled up the wiener first. It was very salty. Her nose was stuffed up so that she couldn't properly taste it. Sucking up air through her nose, she lifted up her head and saw. Who the heck are you? You look creepy. A lightly built girl. She had a frayed stuffed animal attached to her left arm with some bandages. What? She was standing next to the fence. By herself. What could she have been looking at in the sprawling city below? Other had no clue. But for some reason, she couldn't take her eyes off her. Um, okay. Alright, so. Great. I'm just getting heebie jeebies from this girl. She shot a question straight at her. At Arda, of course. There wasn't anyone else on the roof but them. She felt the pressure as if something was pushing against the front of her chest. After staring blankly for a few moments, Adara rubbed her eyes with her sleeve. The girl was waiting for her response. However, Adara had no clue what the question even was. Is that your name? <coughs> Okay. Oh no. True name? Are you gonna be a Chunibyo? True name. Ada, I hated herself for knowing what that meant. Ada. <laughs> she hesitated to give her full name. The girl was kind of scary after all. あなたにいくつかと言いましょう。では、それを唯一講師できるものは彼か。それとも我か。if she starts talking about her, the darkness trapped in her right hand or arm. I mean, I'm a creative person and I think well on my feet. I don't think I could actually answer this one. Yeah. I don't know if I found herself knocked down by a vicious combo barrage of words. Don't worry, they're mostly nonsense. Well, that's a really fancy way to say fate. Her try to actually answer, I'd say the revolutionary force, or more importantly, like the determination of all. Proceeding along an established line, the none can avoid. Alright, now you sound like you're trying to cast a spell? What? Uh, oh, this girl. Having said that, though, she started to guess to what was going on. This girl's incoherent speech, decipherable by no one, hints of a mental sickness of sorts, clothing that resembled cosplay, and a unique set of words that Adara used to describe her world. There's no doubting it. Saiko-san. Oh no! Saiko-san! Yeah, let's go with that one and just move on. 
いやあの理解っていうか何を言ってもあなたがスルーしてもう一度分かりやすく説明しましょう<笑>、えー、アルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルイさんやアルあそこから波動を感じる。鉄塔よりもすぐ近くから垂れ流す波動からユンユンと。<笑>あららはあの鉄塔をポイズンパルスの基地局だと睨んでいる。Oh, this girl. ポイズンパルス。A wave of poison? まあ,あ,あ、はい。Yeah. Poison Palace no say de. Zutuga to Mara no Iwa. Okay. So they are Koshisho Samade. You're handling this a lot better than you handled the last situation. Kuaite Mitaku Naimo no Made Mieru Shimatsu de. Mo Yani Nara. She shoved her hand inside the back of her plushie. And produced a pill case. Oh dear. I don't know. I wrapped the case a bit, making a white colored something pop out of it and into her mouth. Is it gonna be gum? Psycho Sanda. She kind of sounds like one. I don't know. I repeated the phrase. She's a psycho in her mind for no particular reason. This is probably a high level spell of the wave pulse type. <laughs> Adara's heart, seeking to flee reality, was filled with the magical power of imagination. Adara's decision making attribute increased by 10 points. Poison Pulse no Yona. I ta funal odoma. Sekai ni michiru to you. Oh boy. What? Sumatsi hippo chikazuku to you imi. What on earth is this girl on? This is your name. Wakarimas. Kumatimas your name. Adara didn't, Adara didn't understand a thing. She simply decided to play along so she could get away as fast uh, with the, uh, get away as fast as possible. Uh, I don't think playing along is the right approach. <laughs> yeah, so you just get her excited. The girl's eyes open wide. Arie <laughs> Continuing to play along, Adara hurriedly started packing up her things. Oh no. Adara stood shocked in a pose that would have looked great from an overhead view. Oh, having a psycho word suddenly yelled at her, Adara almost felt a surge of in. in. incontinence? Incontinence? Hmm. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
People like her had a pretty pessimistic outlook on humanity, but were actually quite fond of it. Aru uh, reflectively turned around. Aru uh, uh, man, their names are so similar. Aru uh, respect, uh, dis desperate expression turned into a fearless grin. Oh no. Oh no. Oh boy, that's something you only want to hear in the- maybe in a bedroom? But maybe not from her? And not in these circumstances. Oh man. Stretch. She stretched out her hand to Ara. Oh no. Oh no. いや、ま、一緒にっていうのはその都合があった時にでも、ただこの先私も忙しくて時間が取れないかもなんて。急性のパーティーとし。これからはあなたをどう報と呼びましょう。あ、あの、あの、なんとなくですけど。もうあなたとは二度と会いたくいやいやいやいや会わないような気がしますので、せっかくの誘いですけど、今回は他を当たっていただければと。ね、ね、あららと同胞はずっと一緒。Oh <笑> <laughs> oh no. Yeah, yeah. And with that, Ada collapsed. No, oh, wait, she barely managed to keep her balanced. She's giving herself a mental slap in the cheeks. Ada ran away from the rooftop as fast as she could. That was interesting. Once Adara was down from the rooftop, she found herself in an open square. But that is where we're going to stop for today. Hopefully next time she'll actually get to her freaking apartment. I'm guessing she's going to see some familiar faces when she gets there. <laughs> oh, man. What characters? So we had super quiet but crazy strong girl who we totally abandoned. And then we had the psycho on the freaking rooftop who's... Well, I, mean, I don't think she's actually a psycho. I just think she's, she's lost in a world of imagination. Adara kind of does the same thing, but not as much as that girl is. That girl probably uses it as a way to, to, to run, you know, to deal with, like, her stress of whatever's going on. And just being a chu... chu chunabio. Is that... Isn't that the say? I doubt I'm saying it right. Yeah, someone, someone in uh, a comments on online mentioned that they thought they might make a compilation of all my, all my struggles to re recite uh, Japanese words and just how terrible it is. Like, uh, Maybe someday I'll be able to get better at it, but I don't know. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me on this. I'm I'm definitely getting really invested in this one. Real easy. Like, the characters are really approachable, and they're really understandable. I definitely feel like they've got, like, um, Ada has got a lot that she's going to have to deal with. But it means she has a lot of room to grow as a character, and that's really what's important. And I'm so I'm excited to see where this journey takes her. And I really hope, I, I find myself cheering for her, that's for sure. So I guess, what do you guys think about, I guess now that we know a little bit more about the power system and how like these nanobots bots, part of this authority seal actually give you effectively enhan enhancements and superpowers, like, I'm not saying that the government's worth it, but it doesn't make you curious, <laughs> like what you would be getting. Of course, I, I shouldn't be too excited considering what I do right now, which is, a st is, is like taking primarily family and following some hobbies of mine, you know, my authority power would be pretty low. But, I don't know. There is something to, um, like, imagining what this might be like someday. Like, if this were a real system, like, what would my life be like? It'd be, it's interesting to think about. But, uh, yeah, so do you guys have any thoughts about that? And more importantly, do you, th what do you think of the two new girls that we've just met? Do you think they're gonna have a very big impact on us? Or, of course, if you've already read the story, like, no spoilers, but, 
Um, between the two, I think like the black-haired girl who we never got the name of, I think she seems more in the most interesting. Uh, I'd like to understand more about her. And then, like, creepy but crazy on the rooftop. Like, she's going to be interesting. But yeah. I'm looking forward to the next episode, so hopefully you'll stick around and join me for that next week. So thank you so much for being here and enjoying yourself, hopefully as much as I did. And until the next video, you're watching me or whatever you see me in next. I'll see you there.